Hi, I'm Everett and welcome back to the shop. Um, this time what I've got is another work project uh, brought home from the shop. Uh, a little bit of machining and modifying of some hydraulic uh, cylinders and brackets and stuff to fit on a truck. Uh, however, uh, before I get into that, um, I did get some uh, or a little envelope in the mail the other day. Uh, I got it from Teespring. Uh, Steve Summers, uh, his uh, stickers are now through Teespring. I've been wanting a Steve Summers uh, sticker for a long time. I wanted one of his little dudes, but I guess they're uh, they're out of stock now or can't really get them anymore. So I got a uh, little picture of Peanut the Squirrel. I actually got uh, one up ordering three of them here. So uh, one will go to my buddy Eldon and one will go to my buddy Grant as well. But I'll get that up on the board and, you know, I've been wanting one of Steve's stickers for a while because I, I really like the stuff he gets up to. He, he's got some cool stuff. So, I mean, realistically, if you've seen my channel, you know who Steve is. I'll throw a link in the description below just on the odd chance you haven't. But, uh, yeah, if you've seen my channel, you've seen Steve's. Uh, otherwise, uh, what I'm doing this time is a little bit of machining on, um, well, we're doing a bit of modification to some, you know, stock uh, off-the-shelf hydraulic cylinders to fit a, a highway tractor in our shop. Uh, it's, a, it's a 2005 Freightliner Argosy uh, cab over engine style truck. And the thing is the uh, lift cylinders to go, well, basically lift the cab, uh, well, they're leaking and one of them is actually bent. So uh, we can't get them rebuilt. We'd have to replace them. Uh, the new ones are prohibitively expensive and a long ways away. However, we found some utility cylinders at Princess Auto of all places that are uh, similar size, a um, little bit of uh, manipulation. It's pretty much the perfect length uh, as well. Um, the rods themselves are slightly larger. Uh, so that, because the rods are slightly larger, we have less risk of getting bent again. Um, and so, uh, basically, that's the project at this point is, you know, a couple modifications. We've already done a little bit at the shop. Uh, we've already cut off the ends and uh, re-welded the clevis ends onto the cylinders. So once I get the uh, parts machined and uh, cleaned up, uh, tomorrow what I'll do is I'll reinstall the cylinders and, you know, refill the system and get the cab tilting again. Hope you find it interesting. So these are our two old lift cylinders. Uh, this end here mounts to the frame. The other end had a clevis on it. You can see the clevises on the, uh, have been cut off of these guys and then welded onto our new cylinders over here. Uh, the new cylinders here are actually an inch and a quarter in diameter on the rod. Uh, stroke is almost identical, actually. It's crazy how it worked out. Um, the, uh, Outside diameter of the housings, this is two and a quarter. These guys are two and a half. It's pretty darn close. Uh, the, again, the plumbing, we're going to have to change a bit because these had exterior, um, these were made for the truck, right? They have exterior plumbing here to run to the other end. They're a double acting cylinder, uh, meaning that uh, hydraulic pressure can be applied to both ends of the rod to either retract or push under force. Um, because these are utility cylinders, we're going to just we're going to do some adapting with the plumbing with these ORB fittings here. One of the biggest issues we come up against is the fact that because these cylinders here um, have a different style end from the originals, see this end here uh, again, it's made to be used for you know uh, front end loaders or that sort of thing. Um, this portion here is actually two inches uh, in diameter, and that's where the bracket here that goes to the frame, both of them go. That means we're going to have to narrow this to two inches. So it's two and three quarters across here. We have to take three eighths of an inch off either side. Uh, what that does, unfortunately, because we want to maintain the center line of that clevis to the center line of the, uh, of the ram, um, you know, even at the bottom, just so we keep our forces even or whatever. This guy here, when it goes in, um, one of the issues is we're going to have to cut this narrower. The other issue is, again, this was mounted like so on the frame. Well, the problem is with, you know, with mounting it like with that versus this cylinder here, which is the best we could find. Um, basically, the, the length from the end of the tube here 
to the pivot point here is too long, right? Uh, we're going to wind up with issues with binding. However, if we take the mount here and instead of uh, mounting it like that, we flip the holes in the frame, Bob's your uncle. It actually works out just about perfectly on the uh, on our overall stroke length. So that's what we're going to do. The thing about that is that once we take away the shoulder, it's going to interfere here. So we're going to clean these up a little bit after we're done the lathe and take a little bit off just to make sure it clears on this side. Uh, that works for the, this is the passenger side mount. Driver side mount is actually mounted closer to the frame slightly just because of the geometry of how the mounts are in the truck. Uh, so we're going to have to do the same thing here, only to take it down three eighths of an inch, we're going to have to probably take away this part of the gusset here and then uh, relieve enough material so we can get the bolt back into it. But then, you know, that'll then clear the base of the uh, cylinder here. What I'm going to do to start with is just mark out three eighths of an inch in from either side of the uh, barrel here. You know, again, this part here is not perfect, you know, super, super critical as long as it's roughly three-eighths of an inch. If I'm a few thousandths off, it's not going to matter. Steve Summers a while back actually mentioned how it made him cringe to see people use the edges of calipers to scratch with. And he has a point. I mean, the wheel wear the points in your calipers, especially if you have a nice, uh, a nice pair. What I'm going to do is I'm using a jack out here on this end uh, to support the uh, uh, to support the body of the cylinder, I got the uh, uh, eye end clamped nice and tightly in the vise. I'm just going to be taking light cuts anyway, so um, this should be rigid enough for what I need to do. Um, in order to ensure that this is reasonably, you know, going to be a reasonably square cut, uh, I set it up here, and as I was testing, I was running my uh, height gauge across here and I'm just scratching here all the way along the top so that's close enough for what I'm doing so what this allows me to do is it allows me to also once I touch off use the digital readout and you know use the line as a uh, as a sanity check it, it has to be roughly two inches long it doesn't you know if it's a few thou either way it doesn't really matter in this situation okay. Oh, there we go. Zero. Yeah, we're just getting through the paint. And I mean, who's to say that that end was actually welded completely square on, right? So, I mean, like I say, going from here over, it's scratching on the body. That'll be close enough for our purposes. Like I said, we're going to take light cuts. There's 20. On this pass on the way back. Right now it doesn't matter because the edge of this uh, eye end is above the end of the cylinder. But um, as I go further, I've been given heck numerous times for not using a paintbrush to get chips out of the way. Note taken, I am listening. It's a habit I gotta break. Um, okay, so anyway, back to where we were. Uh, as I approach the edge of this um, cylinder, this little uh, you know sleeve on the end there that's welded on, um, as I get closer to the end of the cylinder here, uh, nice thing is I can actually just uh, do a fine adjust to make sure I don't carve into this end here. 
Uh, in a nutshell, you see what I'm doing here. I'm just going to have to take a number of light cuts. I'm going to have to do that to both sides on both cylinders. I figured I'd bring you in on the final pass on this one. This is still the first uh, surface to uh, the first of the four surfaces needing machining, but I figured I'd bring you in for the the uh, cleanup pass on this one. using oil with this one. Well, I've been using oil for the each of the passes. Makes the shop a little smoky though. after you've been using a lot of cutting oil and you open the door and suddenly your garage looks like you've had an episode of that 70s show filmed in it. All right, using the brush, not my fingers. So this is basically what I need to do to the other three um, sides of the rod ends. Um, again, I just figured you might want to see that, uh, that finished pass. So I just finished the last pass on the last face here. Uh, worked out pretty well. Um, one thing I just wanted to mention uh, before I go over to the bench is that, um, you know, I had it all set up so that um, I be, you know, when I was originally cutting the uh, the initial faces, the end here of the cylinder actually was touching the bottom of the vise. Well, this piece here is 375 thousandths or three eighths of an inch thick, and by sliding it underneath the part before tightening it down, you know, and then double checking my um, uh, my parallelism to the table. Uh, that means I could leave my jack just about the right uh, or the same height between between uh, machining of cylinders or cylinder faces. So anyway, I just wanted to show that while I was at it. Thanks again for the jacks, uh, Phil and Pierre. These things are awesome. So that came out well. The uh, ends here are now two inches across. Little shoulder here. We're going to have to be able to clear whatever. Um, the next step, uh, what we're going to do is moving on to the lathe. Uh, we need to be able to modify these two mounts. Um, in a nutshell, what we have to do is, for example, for this one, for this mount, we're almost there. Um, I'm going to uh, basically just have to take a uh, take it on the lathe, and while leaving a bit of a boss that will ride on this uh, machine surface here. Uh, we're going to have to take, make some clearance on it so that the end of the cylinder here, the actual welded end, will uh, clear on the mount because we're going this way, not that way. Well, we would have had to make clearance either way. So yeah, I think what we'll do is we'll pause it there, uh, come back at it next time. Um, again, often my videos wind up being a little on the too long side, so uh, we'll make this a two-parter. Uh, Hope to see you in part two. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, if you haven't subscribed again, like I always say, thanks for coming by. Even if you haven't, you know, it's cool to have you here. Uh, thanks for all the comments, the likes, the uh, feedback. Um, again, sometimes I don't know if I'm doing something wrong or if people find stuff annoying without hearing about it. So uh, like I say, thanks everybody. See you in part two.